done just yet. So let's uh, hop into this one as we have in the top left hand side. We're going to have the blue Protoss player from Dragon Kaizi Gaming. It is Hero. In the bottom right, our red Terran is going to be from one side. It is Maru. Game one of this best of five as a barracks drops in on the far right. That's going to be Maru opening up with some proxy play here in the Korean Royale semi-finals again. This is a rematch from their finals last season. It's a pretty ferocious best of seven. I feel like I've used the word ferocious a lot lately, but that was a great word for uh, the finals we had last time. It was back and forth. Maru took a lead. Hero tied it up. Maru took the lead back. Hero went to match point. Maru tied it to an ace game. Hero won it. It was back and forth. It was very, um... It was just a very fun kind of, uh... Very fun kind of series, honestly. And uh, we had a very good time of it. Like I say, it was a, a lot of fun. It was not like super long macro games. Definitely kind of quick, aggressive, up in your face. Very aggressive styles. I remember on this map, I think Hero did some kind of aggressive push into... I think Hero was top left and Maru was bottom right. I seem to remember Hero hitting hard. I think it was map two of the series. For some reason, it really sticks to my mind. Because Maru had looked so good in game one. I was like, oh gosh, if Maru plays like that, is Hero going to be able to stand up and fight? And then Hero, like, smashed him in six minutes in game two on Dragon Scales. Yeah. I think it was, like, the Robo, like, three gate or so, and he just had, like, a bunch of units. Yeah. For some reason, that one sticks in my mind. It's... Yeah, it was a great final back in Season 1. Let's see what our semi-final has in store for us. The Reaper hops up into the natural, and it's going to move around here. In fact, going to head in towards the main base. As we have the barracks floating back home, by the way. It's just coming back, and the Reaper is actually going to chase a probe that's trying to move out. It did get a battery down, so that's the risk you're running. Getting the battery down, and you get the Reaper into the bunker, and it will sort of hit the uh, Stalker. SCV will jump out, do a bit of repairing here and there. Just some little bits and pieces with that as our Stalker comes back through. SCV pops out again, going to go back onto the bunker. This bunker will get repaired up a little further. Both of these Stalkers coming through, and a grenade goes down to bop the Stalkers back, so keeping them at bay, Bunker will salvage. Quick, efficient cleanup from Hero, Mario essentially forces a very far forward battery, which might be easily targeted should he attack up the natural at any stage. And we go from there as our Stargate comes up, a couple more probes coming out, the Adept's in production still, and this Reaper continues to go around the left-hand side also, so just going to set up over on the far left now, as we have ourselves... A triple CC from Maru. He's going to go not just one expansion, but two. And we'll set up for that in the near future as this Reaper hops up, hops down, drops the grenade. Whoa! The... I wonder if it's like some specific position that's perfect if you hop up and then down, uh, hop down and then up into that corner specifically. Gets in, gets to see the Stargate, gets to see the Phoenix, and don't tell me he's getting out alive. Well, probably not. There's more units in the natural, but he'll put one more grenade down. He tries for the probe kill, doesn't quite get the still nice to get the full scout of course that is very good very effective good information to have as our phoenix continues into the bottom right from hero twilight council is about halfway done as our phoenix is scouting so hero trying to keep up some information would love to just know roughly what is going on as well i guess as another phoenix comes across that's going to be the two phoenix together going to make a bit of a play towards the main although a cyclone there is then going to turn the Phoenix around. And the Phoenix still trying to see just what it is that they might be able to do. Not much just yet as a couple of gates come up. The charge is on the way. Both those Phoenix are back to the top side. A third Phoenix even showing up as well. So it's three Phoenix in total now, all gathering together. And yeah, charge still just on the way up as well, bringing that into play. There's a couple more SCVs and Marines. All on the way out. Thank you so much, Kulturamus, for the six-month resub. Welcome back. Our Nexus goes down on the third. The Stalker and the couple of Zealots gather up on the natural, and we do see the Hallucination. That's not a Hallucination. We do see the Adept Shade. <laughs> Just trying to keep picking up info in the natural as well. Hallucination, Adept Shade. You know, they're both they're both shadowy, uh, ephemeral figures. Yeah, it's, it's fine. 
same, same old thing. Charges on the way up though from here. So he's going to play this Phoenix uh, Charge, which obviously with Phoenix Charge you're going to be quite, uh, you know, you're going to be able to be quite aggressive if that's what you're really feeling like. So that is a possibility. Some Phoenix Charge. You know, if you've, it's one of those scenarios where if you attack into this as the Terran, you really do have a bad time because the charge lots really do overwhelm you in the early game. It's very hard to kind of chew through charge lots without, uh, you know, the proper amount of Marines, the proper amount of upgrades. And, and Hero is going to turn it a bit aggressive. He is going to come across. There's no wall on the natural. There's no units. Okay, there's, there's a handful of Marines on the natural too. The Phoenix don't even know what to lift, I feel like. They lift the siege tank in the end. Now they're just going to go for individual marines as they let the zealots go after a bunch of those SCVs. The cyclone's coming down the ramp where they're going to get one lock on. Eleven workers go down for Maru. He loses his tank. He loses a lot of his initial marine count. And this might be one of those scenarios where the continued pressure just keeps up. The Phoenix can still dive and they're going to get a cyclone here as well. There's no reinforcements on this side of the map from Hero. If there was, Maru might be very dead right now. Instead, he's just kind of dead. <laughs> He's definitely behind, and Hero has definitely put himself in a great spot. Like I say, reinforcements sooner might have just about pushed him over the limit. Reinforcements at this rate, well, a bunker was able to build before reinforcements got here, so that's how much time has been uh, had to really deal with this as a Widow Mine shot goes off, and a couple of SCVs will be uh, going down. Phoenix is getting forced away. Plus one air weapons, a second Stargate. We're going to double down on. Phoenix? I, I suppose. I mean, what else are you going to double down on? Oh, so we're going to really stick to the, to the just overwhelming Phoenix counts. I think if Hero wants to see success with this, he has to keep on being aggressive, though. Like, if you really want to make this work, you need to keep chipping away at that Terran army. You need to make sure the Marine count never gets super high. If you're going to put so much investment into units that get overwhelmed by Vio, you can't let the Bio become overwhelming. That is very much so in your control right now. Those Phoenix move back and forth. A handful of Zealots do make their way down to the south. Phoenix still come up. We have a few Zealots backing away. What are mines, Marauders, the concussive shells all coming up. And, yeah, I mean, obviously, plus one, attack, uh, plus one air weapons, plus one shields. Just some good bits and bobs on the way out right now. Here comes this army from Hero again. Settling, and there's other Phoenix gather. Man, there's 14 Phoenix. Here's Maru pulling the SCVs. Is this not where you really wish you had some amount of splash damage instead of just endless Phoenix? Phoenix lifting up Marines. Phoenix not having a good time. <laughs> I just don't understand what hero like I, I'm waiting for the magic I'm waiting for the surprise I'm waiting for the oh yeah the like the realization of that's why the Phoenix are good here I've not been convinced and I don't think I'm going to be Maru's SCV pull might just be the perfect solution to it as well because now the SCVs are going to protect the bio a bit longer so even more Marines survive to keep on fighting the Phoenix which are going to go lift up as much as they can even if you lift up every single Marine, these Marauders are going to do some serious damage. And we're kind of getting there. There's only a few Marines left, but the Phoenix are out of energy. So now the Marines are just going to fire up some free shots on them. All the probes going down. And Maru is going to take game number one after... Like I say, he didn't die on his natural, but he would definitely end up behind. Oh, wow, wow. Maru takes game one of this best of five. I just do not know. Top right-hand side. Currently up one map, then he does get the lead in this series. It is going to be the red Terran player, Maru. And in the bottom left, it is going to be our blue Protoss from Dragon Kaizi Gaming. Hero. Alright, first SCV just comes out. This is not going to be a proper proxy, just a barracks out of the main base so you can confuse and scare Hero a little bit. Uh, but no real kind of, uh, no real plan to be overly aggressive with this one. As that barracks comes up, refinery coming in. Let's get that settled to go.
probe heading to the upper right hand side. As we have the racks coming through, the probe coming up. Does EU have the patch? I don't think so. Not unless it got updated earlier today. Or oh, while I've been live. Yeah, it's a very weird situation. It, it's absolutely not normal in the slightest. I, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a very uh, weird one. Why well, no new maps? Exactly the same reason. The new maps aren't live on Korea. We're just going to, uh, basically for the remainder of this term, unless they update it overnight on a Saturday into Sunday, we're just going to play the rest of this event out because it's the finals tomorrow. We're just going to play it out on old patch and old maps. And then we can start with new maps uh, from next week, where hopefully all the servers get patched properly and everything. Also, you know, these things kind of got dropped on all the players kind of out of nowhere. Like, we did know there was a PTR, the map pool was announced. Um, and I'm sure the Koreans have been practicing a bit, because obviously GSL is coming up. But I think uh, in terms of being, you know, being ready to play competitively on them this weekend was a little bit of a push. So in the end, I think it works out like this quite nicely. The KSL this week was on the new patch? Yeah, because they played on the Singapore server, which is on North... So the Singapore server is on the America server, so they played on Singapore. So all the Koreans were forced to play with like 100 ping in the Korean StarCraft League. But I, I understand why they did it, they wanted to have new patch. Uh, I'd rather play the tournament on the Korean server, so I'd rather just play on what is live on this server. Also, uh, another part of the reason is, I told the players two days ago, they asked me what we would play, and I said, oh, we're gonna play whatever is live on the Korean server at the time of the tournament. Was that intending to be the new patch, to be fair? Because I thought they would update Korea. Um, but obviously when I told them that, then obviously then it's not happened and... Yeah, so now we're still on the other one. Like I say, I think this works out nicely. We've had the rest of the event on this patch on these maps. Wrap it up on this one. And then like I say, we can get new maps, new patch on our tournaments from next week onwards. Yes, guys, this is old patch. But can it really be called the old patch when it's the current patch in Korea? This is present day patch, not future patch. How about that? <laughs> My Marines is going to go and uh, nibble their way through a pylon or so. Bit of damage being done. That's a cyclone. A few Marines, a couple of probes coming out. Get this underway. I could just state the patch. I could just state the patch, but I also don't have the mods, and I don't know if there's working mods for the new patch or whatever. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to commit us and being like, "Yep, we're gonna play a new patch." And then, if this did happen, which it did, then I would be kind of screwed because I don't have a mod for the new patch. So I could have done a lot of things, guys. I mean, this is a completely unprecedented situation. At the end of the day, we're playing the old patch. We're playing the old maps. It's like two days extra. I actually think it makes for better competition. I don't think, based on what I've seen from World Team League so far and some other tournaments in New Patch, I don't think the games are as good quality because people haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm very happy for this tournament to get wrapped up on the old one. A couple of Cyclones and a Viking still getting set as we have ourselves the Liberator coming up, a few Marines coming through. Our Robo Bay about to finish as this army of Mara comes into the center. A couple of Phoenix are going to get locked onto and pushed away. Maru is sending it a little bit with this attack. SCVs, no saturation on the natural, only 25 workers in the game. So Maru, big attack, loses one Cyclone immediately, loses the second Cyclone quickly. Not a great start. The rest of his units just trailing behind a bit, so not able to be part of this. Two more as a battery up from Hero. Tank will have a lot to say about this. Tank will do a lot in terms of maybe being able to break through this. Is it going to be enough to actually break through this at all? As my Marines will go, battery will fall. The Liberator here as well, there's still a lot of power in this Terran army, a lot of power that's dedicated in one specific place, which right now is where Hero has to fight from because he has no way to get out from his natural, so that's the kind of power of this, the uh, the fact that you can really just make one position super uh, difficult for your opponent to uh, kind of deal with. 
Because you have this Liberator sieging up, the units are going to start pressing forward. The Phoenix coming through, a couple of liftoffs. Siege tank getting picked back up and dropped back down as well. And the units of Hero just continuing to push on forward. The Colossus going after that bunker, nipping that away nice and quickly as well. As Phoenix lifting up another siege tank. And the Liberator gets sieged. Our is not going to be able to do enough. This was plenty from Hero. Convincing defense that Hero is going to take. Game two, we're tied up one to one in this best of five. Right hand side, the red Protoss player. This is Hero. Tying the series up one to one with the defense on the Ancient Cistern. In the bottom left, our blue Terran from onside, Maru. Can he make it to. I mean, one of these players will make back to back Korean Royale finals. The other. Four. And they met each other in the finals last season. Looking to see who can do it again. Couple of refineries coming up, barracks on the way. Nothing too surprising in the first couple of moments here. Let's see what exact kind of style Hero's gonna play. It is double gas, so Mario will be a little bit more aggressive before he expands. That's pretty normal in the metagame to go double gas expansion, for example. So he's going to set himself up for that. And it allows you to put a bit more pressure on. Again, if you just get the CC when you build the factory, it's still a pretty eco-focused build. You know, you're still getting your expansion down at a pretty good timing and everything, so. Yeah, still in a pretty good place. As our cybercore comes up, the orbital command comes in. And look at Hero go. Gold base immediately. So last uh, time on Royal Blood against Gumiho earlier today, he proxied a Stargate and went gold base. Today he's just going to straight up go gold base. A little bit of a different uh, way to approach things here. That's that SCV. Coming out to the top, heading toward the main. Nexus is about halfway done. Again, our assimilator just about to pop out as well. So Nexus halfway done, the assimilator popping. And this probe is going to come put the uh, <laughs> battery down. It's funny, if Mario was watching the earlier games, he checks this gold base. He's like, huh, that's where you expanded earlier. This time here it goes bottom right. Is there a better reason to go bottom right or top left? I don't think so. If you're going to play a game off the golds, I don't think it really matters too much whether you choose you know, bottom right or top left. But... Um, I guess mixing it up makes it more of a question mark as now the SCV is going to come across. He's going to see the gold in a moment. Amara will confirm, especially with the timing. But there shouldn't be any sort of super quick proxy or anything here. It is, in fact, just going to be the gold bases. He's already building a tank. And he actually sits on one base himself. So he's going to go starboard. Okay, this could be really good for Maru because if he goes into like a very aggressive marine tank push, maybe you go marine tank Viking with a medevac or so, maybe even get a liberate out after... This could be very hard to hold off on the gold base. So the fact that Mario dedicates the tank immediately as well could perhaps put him in a great spot there. Hero is going to play the Stargate and Phoenix to try and defend this and try and set himself up into a position of success right now. Yo, Phil McJr, thank you so much for the 60-month resub on the Prime. Hello, dude. Keep up the great work and keep SC2 alive. Doing our best to help the SC2 scene in any way we can, man. Thank you so much the resub. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for supporting the stream today with your Prime sub. Two adepts continue down the bottom right. We do have units pressing out from Maru heading over toward that gold base. So he definitely seems to know what he wants to do here. This one Phoenix moves into the main where we have uh, got a couple of units just building away. The tank is going to set up. Going to get ready to siege. Pylon coming through. First shots going off on these adepts. Well, obviously, we have SCVs here. This uh, tank should not die to a group of adepts. The fact that the super battery is already popped is kind of dangerous, no? But I feel like you're not really dealing any damage during this super battery. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's allowed the adepts to be here, but we don't have any. if you don't have any damage output, now the super battery is gone. Even if you now have damage output, it usually it's going to die too quickly. I think I would have rather seen the adepts just back off and, and not use the super battery in that moment, although... If you're not going to try and save the base in the end, I guess it doesn't matter because then the super battery won't be needed for a while anyway. Maru is still on one base, remember, guys. So it's important for him to not get too overwhelmed back at home as well as the Cyclone is the only thing that can shoot the Phoenix right now. 
SCVs are going to pull forward to repair the Cyclone, and I don't think there's enough DPS there. There's a Viking just popped out. He will keep that Cyclone alive, at least. Only a couple of Marines lost. Mario continues his attack to the upper right, where obviously Hero has not exactly got himself any real units because the Phoenix are across the map. The Adepts are still on the map as well. Choosing to attack the main ramp of Maru means that now Maru comes across this other side. And as he gets the tank sieged up, Bunker goes down. A couple of probes taking some big hits. Let's see. The Adepts going down pretty quickly. The probes continue to drop. We target down one Phoenix. I think Maru is just doing enough. Eight workers already killed. Obviously, this natural expansion is not even built because we originally were on the gold base. And now we're trying to build here as a backup plan. Vikings will just land. We're just going to commit forward. These few stalkers are not making the difference just yet. The Cyclone's still zoning away on the Phoenix. Doing the best we can with that. The next is about to finish. Stalker is uh, going to take a few more shots. In fact, a couple Stalkers start to go down. Our Marines still pushing through. Our Vikings as well. Our Nexus will take a little bit more damage. And just seeing ourselves, the Adepts getting jumped on the Cyclone. Still moving up. Tackle and Siege, Siege and back into the main. Our unit's going to press forward. Bunker coming in. Depths are going to come by. What are they going to do? They're going to jump on top of this. Well, in we go. The last ditch effort from Hero here in game number three. But Maru is going to go back in the lead of this series and convincingly so with these attacks. Absolutely denying and just, stop, just stomping the gold base build. Not letting Hero do what he wants to do. And instead making Hero play to his beat. Maru is in the lead. 2-1 to one in his favor in this best of five. Ah. Hero especially is always up late. Hero usually... I oftentimes when I ask Hero about a tournament, he replies to me at like 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning in Korea. Actually, not so much recently, but, but a lot of the time he still does. Trap used to be the worst event. Trap was always like 6, 7 a.m. And it definitely wasn't him waking up early. That was him still being away. He's always replying to me then. Top right side, our blue Terran player. This is in the 2-1 position. Maru from on side. In the bottom left, our red Protoss from Dragon Kaizi Gaming. Zero. When it goes to the Grand Finals. The Grand Finals. Tomorrow. Again, we'll have tomorrow the full bottom side of the playoff played. So, Classic plays Astraea to open us up. Winner of that plays PVT against Cure. Winner of that plays versus Beyond. And then Dark in the semifinals on the bottom half of the bracket. And that leads us into the Grand Finals. Whoever wins this series here will be playing the winner of that bottom half of the bracket. That's how the Korean Royale Season 2 is going to conclude. As our Nexus drops down, the Cyber Core and the Nexus coming up. That pylon coming in, probe getting built. Just seeing ourselves, the SCV and the probe going to come uh, across by each other just for a couple of moments initially. And just our probe moving back into the main base, so going to pull back here. A couple of probes are going to jump onto this assimilator. We do have our reactor factory and command center to continue to build. SCV coming up. The warp gate is coming in. The adept chrono boosting away. So far. So good as our sentry also begins to get going right now. Adept will make its way out onto the front and move in into the middle of the map here. Sentry and the warp gate coming up. The Twilight Council is producing. So far, so good. Our CC will be about to finish. Finally coming in. The couple of Marines coming out. Starport still building on the side of Maru. Now Hero starts to send some units forward, but I mean, he's just, you know, keeping these units at home. There's nothing to keep them at home for, so. Mario just cranking out Marines on his way to a Hellion. And the Starport, obviously, CC had a pretty regular timing. We're going to see another Hellion, though. I was going to say, just kind of had a feeling that with the way Mario's been playing, I would not be too shocked if he was just like, oh, by the way, big Hellion drop with some Marines attacking. 
or something along those lines, and that seems to be the plan. As the starport will begin medevac, hallucination, gonna come back up the right hand side. Again, a couple of marines coming out, the medevac coming through, one more SCVs in production. At length, it's Chronobus and away on the Twilight Council. Oracle is not real, so it will just get away, Maru pushing it back. I mean, the thing is with this hallucination, it didn't see what spawned out of the uh, factory, right? It will do now. It sees a Hellion, it's a good little bit of info. And his actual wall off here from Heroes quite nice. He's going to put himself fully walled, stop Hellions from slipping by. And he's going to get his other units towards the main base. He knows the combination of things that can happen here. He knows pretty much exactly what Maru is doing is a possibility. So he's going to set himself up the best way he can. Stop the Hellions from getting into the natural. Stop the Marines from getting into the main. I think it's going to be a pretty successful first couple minutes of the game for Hero because now eh, we do get the unload from Maru, but the units are still nearby. And like I say, the defense on the natural should be just a given already as the Hellions move up there. The depth in the wall. And yeah, everything that Maru has built is not going to succeed in dealing any damage at all. Now, it's not like Maru had to deal loads of damage, but the Hellions especially could have been like Widow Mines, and a Widow Mine drop is probably guaranteed more damage than what we just did here, so... There still would have been definite benefits to kind of go from that point as our Medivac continues up to the top side. Still seeing that plus one attack coming through, the Siege Tank coming through, extra Marines are producing. Our refinery building from Maru in the natural expansion, so getting that online as well as a couple of Stalkers just going to come blinking off over to the edge. Just for the next few moments still. Two Marines gonna go and pick off uh sorry, two swords gonna just go pick off a marine. Hero is now gonna have the prism to go harass with. This is blink finish, so the few stalkers will be able to get out to base Colossus as the third Nexus now starts, but and that robo base so quickly, definitely intending to really be very teched up initially and kind of working from there as this prism makes its way all the way into this main. In the next couple of moments, we have ourselves the unload, a few stalkers popping out. And with these few stalkers, we can go and, well, blink on top of one SCV, two SCV, three SCV more. Nope, no, just two SCVs. We missed target fire multiple times. <laughs> Blinks back, gets a few shots on the Raven, softening it up. And now just pulls the prism out of there for a couple of moments as again the extended thermal lens, the Colossus, and the plus one attack upgrade all continue to build. The prism's still around that bottom side. Our Nexus is halfway done from Hero. Our probes are still producing through the pylons as well. Hero just comes back up the top as these few stalkers are going to blink. The medevac is going to shut down as well. What? What? What do we lift up for? I don't, don't think he needed to lift up there with all the Stalkers firing one more volley. I think it would have just died immediately. Didn't matter in the end either way. It was good. Denies the medevac and... Mario finishes up his stim plus one. He will send four Widow Mines out on the map. There's a lot of bio in the main base. If the Stalkers try to kind of, you know, make their way back in there, they'd probably not find too much success, but... And yeah, that's the power of having the Prism and the Blink. You really have like a double whammy of being able to harass and get away and just not take damage on these units. So Hero should be pretty happy about that as our Stalkers come through and just keeping the Raven and the other bio units at bay. The bio is going to come stemming across. And the Prism continues to get out over that far right hand side. Charge and plus one and the extended thermal lands all continue to build. And yeah, the bio army continues to make its way around the bottom side. Wood of Mine's firing, a couple probes go down. We actually have another Wood of Mine going off. Third probe gets killed. We actually did lose a Stalker there. It somehow didn't blink away in time. As the Prism gets caught, so Maru denies the Prism. That obviously means that that can't stay out on the map. It can't be a harassment tool. That's a nice little advantage for the Terran player here. As the Terran forces go back and forth with the Stalkers. But as the sentries in the Colossi show up, Maru's just going to go running. I wonder if he just... I mean, I think you got to respect the possibility that this just comes across the map, actually. You maybe need to get enough home with enough units to make sure you do defend that. Oh, he just load up. He gets away to the corner. I mean, he's dragging it top left. He's also sending another drop bottom right. So still looking for ways to get in with units. Still looking for ways to harass and deal damage. Hero. Building off of this pretty stable three-base situation. 
A Dark Shrine coming up, a couple of Storgas coming through, plus two attack on the way, and the Dark Shrine coming up as well. The mine's dropping down, eight probes again picked off. We do have ourselves a nice little drop there. This one with a mine in the natural too, still firing. Ten kills already, so in general, Haru is just doing really good damage. A slow hero down. We do lose the Medivac. The Observer's here to kill that mine off as well. I mean, you're talking about a worker lead for a Terran player. A decent army from the Terran too. Third base established. Tech online and improving with the Ghost Academy now underway as well. Science all pointing to Maru at the moment. Definitely an advantage for him here on altitude, but it does also start to trend towards maybe a bit of a later game. We're at the point where Hero will want to start thinking about probably a fourth base. And that's where Maru is going to have his next challenge to try and keep Hero off of a fourth base as long as possible. How well will Maru achieve that goal? Units coming about, you can see a Godel Mine shot going off, and a few Storks chased away. Medivac again down the right side. The four Widow Mines inside. We engage over on the left once again. Widow Mine shoots. Just gonna be seeing our sentry taking damage. We're gonna dive the main base. Stalkers gonna start taking a lot of damage here. A couple of pylons will begin to go down. The Prism coming across with the Colossus to try and help out in the main. Meanwhile, we do have the Widow Mine drop now. Ah, well, it was meant to be boosted in over here. It is going to get fully denied. Wow, a little moment of uh, reprieve for Hero because Mary just stopped the Medivac. Like, if he just kept going, it would have had the typical kind of unload across the mineral line. At the very least, he gets some probes out of that, right? A little bit of a failure there for Mary as he still gets a pile on. Obviously, push back in the main as well, though. But, I mean, a successful moment or two from Hero. I'm still not sure he's really happy about the position. You're still on three bases. There's finally the fourth building, but the Terran's fourth is finishing, so the Terran player getting the four bases before you do a massively negative sign for Protoss. Hero may try and push his luck on the other side. I don't hate it. There is a world in which maybe Maru has given up a few too many units in this harassment, and maybe then Hero sees some success, although Hero actually has a lot of units still on the left side too, so he'll still be forced to split his army. In that case, the chance of him finding success on an attack in is probably pretty low unless he manages to gather everything together all at once. Seven Dark Templar on the map. Our Shadow Stride completed. So we will have ourselves the DTs available now to start harassing as our scan comes out over on the far left. Fire comes back over, just sitting at the front for a little bit. That's a few more Zelda's getting warped into you, so continue to bring those out as our... Well, our Guardian Shield goes up, DTs are going to get pushed away. We just have our sentries, our Colossus firing away, a couple of SCVs dropping, Stalkers continue to deal damage. The Marauders come down, units from the left hand side, the NPs all across this army. Oh, Hero is going to have the DTs moving forward, but there is a scan, so we should be able to damage through them. The Colossi are currently getting beaten down by a few Vikings off on the edge. Maru still has enough units. He dives forwards, gets rid of the Colossus. There's no splash damage left here. Oh, okay. One Colossus survives that. One Archon morphed in two. I think Maru still has the slight edge in this as his upgrades two to one. To two to one, actually. So that part remains even as I would have mind trying to line up a shot on the few Zealots. Stalk is still going. Depot in the sensor tower, taking some hits. Bio going to stem down this low ground. As we stem down that lower ground, a couple of Stalkers are going to peel away and do a little bit more themselves as our extra gates, our Colossus, etc. all coming through. We have DT still producing. DT's going to dive in. A couple of SCVs will take some hits. Our bio will still chase. And the DTs are still pushed out away to the right-hand side, so... And a chance to chase down. We're going to have Maru picking off one of those Dark Templar. The other Dark Templar just sat to the side. Back in we go. DTs. Sorry, Disruptor's going to take a shot to you. There are DTs still being added in. Maru's supply is maintained about a 60 advantage. I think Hero's supply is going to start taking a bit more of a dip now as well as he just dives through. Here you have Maru. Again, just a few too many Marauders. All these units are melting to the Marauder fire. And that really seems as though Maru is just establishing a better and stronger position here in this game.
Tomb of Vikings coming out. Marine Marauder still producing through the couple of disruptors are building as well. His DT, uh, Widow Mines in the center, just going to get rid of a couple Stalkers too. Expensive losses, right? The sort of losses you don't really want to be seeing. As our fourth base is floating down that right hand side. I'm just going to take a dive onto the Disruptor. Going to pick that off. A couple of Widow Mines still burrowing up. And we just dive ourselves onto this Robo Facility. Pylon gets EMP'd as well. A couple of Zealots will go down. These other Zealots coming across. We have the rest of Maru's army now moving up from the top. And we do have Maru looking pretty, pretty comfortable. I, honestly, I mean, his position just keeps getting better every time I kind of look at the numbers. Pulling a few probes as well. Hero is getting toward five bases, but now Maru's splitting the army up as well, and that's going to make it even more difficult for Hero to survive. The bottom right drops. Will get unloaded. These Stalkers will back away. Disruptor is going to be there to defend, but like I say, here's the split, and now Hero has to split his smaller force to defend against Maru. That's going to be a difficult task. As he, oh my goodness, Maru's awareness immediately dives forward onto that Disruptor. Great Widow Mine into the Zealots as well. Hero taking a lot of damage. The Marauders going to get blown up right there. We dive through for Disruptor kill. The Vikings still chasing. The Observer in the sky gets shot down. And it looks as though Hero is maybe going to get enough together to push this back. His entire army should achieve that because, again, this is not everything for Maru. He still has a split away force to the bottom right, but that's the new problem as we move in over here. Preemptive scanning case of DTs. All these probes go down. And I think Hero is going down here in this best of five. Mario looking to move his way to the grand finals on the day. Full of three ones. This is going to be another added to that list. Guardian Shield pops up. We blink forward. Marauders being chased. The Medivac having to come with them. Let's just have his bio units still being pushed around. A couple more Guardian Shields coming up. And we do have a Disruptor shot firing too. Another one again there. A couple more Disruptor shots coming out. Bang, bang. Disruptors are good. Army supplies are evening a little bit. Now has to take this somewhat seriously. Can't just kind of give things up just yet. Stalkers come across that right side. Knocked down a bunker. And these supplies, like I say, reliant on these Disruptors landing for the most part. Maru has eaten a few shots. He's losing SCVs here as he tries to stay alive. 20 army supply in the lead. Another disruptor going down. His few zealots are slowing things. He knocks down the Colossus so gets rid of the splash damage. Now the main culprit of the splash damage outside of the disruptor shots. And now Maru back into his own hands with the micro. He is still up in work despite losing 20 SCVs. That really kind of shows you the position he was in going into this. As reinforcements storm out of the base, the disruptor shot there went absolutely nowhere. And Maru does have solid economy behind it, so he's even chasing now a sentry. Goes down in that chase, so another little loss. Something else to be added on to. And yeah, at this point, it looks as though Maru is booking himself into tomorrow's grand finals, where he will play against the winner of the bottom half gauntlet. Classic Astraea, Cure, Beyond Dark, fighting for a spot in the finals. It looks as though Maru will be their opponent as Maru knocks the Observer down, comes back over the right side. Finishes off these gates in this base. Hero has a third of the army supply right now. As a couple of DTs are going to come across. And they might find some damage. This base of Maru's got a little bit of a depletion in terms of uh, its work account. But if that's Maru's biggest issue, three DTs, it's really not going to be that much of a problem. He actually pulls back to shut these down as well. So just going to drop a couple scans. They will all go down. I mean, was the missile turret worth it? Hero. Was it worth it? Was it enough for you? I kind of feel like absolutely not. <laughs> oh. And long distance mining as the probes need somewhere to get money from is yet another scan, yet another DT. Hero desperately trying to find some way, mechanism, tool, anything that can give him a little bit of a step back. A few more SCVs going down as the DT taking some shots. That bioforce coming across. Boom, and a couple of marines get blown up. Boom, and a couple more go down. Still see the bio coming over. Disruptor shots taking damage. A couple more marines get killed off as well. And that Disruptor also going to get picked off there as we continue up to the top. Our stalks will take some hits. Our Disruptor's going down. And Maru, with a hero on 10 army supply, is going to find himself into 
the Wardy TV Korean Royale Season 2 Finals. GG's Maru 3, Hero 1. Maru was top.